Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to talk to you about some of the use cases for KSQL. Now, there's a number of things you can do with KSQL. It's a declarative stream processing language, so anything you want to do with streaming data, you can do. But let me uh, get you primed with some of the things that it's good for. Now, first of all, simple data exploration. Uh, this is, right now, one of the bummers with stream processing. And relational databases are super mature, the tool sets are just, there's all kinds of options, and all kinds of great ways to explore data that's in a relational database, uh, almost regardless of the schema or the purpose of the intent. That's kind of easy to do. Not so much with streaming data, but with KSQL now, you have this command line tool where I can look at the topics I've got in my Kafka cluster with the show topics command. Um, I can very trivially print out the data uh, that's in a topic. Even if I haven't created a single stream or really engaged with KSQL as a language at all, I can poke around at data in Kafka topics and, and the, the list of Kafka topics just from the command line. It's super cool. Now, once I've defined streams and tables, that's the thing we'll talk about in another video. Of course, my data exploration powers only get better, but right from the word go with show topics and print, this is kind of a breath of fresh air. I can, I can poke around at data, look at things. It's great. Streaming ETL is a place a lot of people go to first when they start to understand what KSQL is all about, and they see what they can do. Uh, kind of the thought process tends to be this direction where we've got some kind of data pipeline. Events are coming into the pipeline and we want intelligent analysis to go out the other end. Uh, let's just say uh, clickstream data is coming in and we want to know uh, who are our high status customers who are currently using the website. Uh, they, you know, we want to engage with them right now. That, that could be a uh, like, you know, kind of processing you want to do. Or maybe, uh, you know, how much did they buy or, or how long were they on the site that day? This, this would be streaming ETL, kind of an event-driven real-time processing of some kind of streaming data. Here you see a query that gets that done, and I'd like to walk you through it uh, real quickly. Now, the first line, create stream VIP actions as, what that says is that we are defining uh, a query that's going to go run. We're creating a new stream. There's going to be a new Kafka topic underlying that stream. Uh, and this query is going to go run in the KSQL engine on the KSQL servers and never stop until we, we kill it. So we're creating a new stream, really a new stream processing program. We're creating that as a select, and this is very common, ordinary looking SQL, a select from a thing called click stream, and that's going to be a stream of click events, joined to a thing called users. Uh, now, I haven't told you the difference between a stream or a table and all of the KSQL nuance behind that. And the great news is, I really don't need to. This just makes sense. I've got this stream of click events and I've got presumably a table of my users. It looks like my click stream has a user ID on that third line. Of course, my user table has a user ID and now I can join them. And now I get a new stream that's my click stream data enriched with my user data. And that enrichment is handy because on the fourth line, we use it to filter. We only want platinum level users. Now, we didn't know who was platinum level just from the stream of clicks, but we didn't know the user ID. So we were able to join to the user table, do the filter, create the new stream. So this is the very beginning of a streaming ETL pipeline. From here, I might do other things like, like count up what they buy or how long they stay on the site or, or whatever that is, uh, and produce those simple tables as output when my input was this undifferentiated torrent of click events that meant nothing. So the very beginning of streaming ETL here, you see in this example. Anomaly detection, uh, another super simple use case. Imagine we've got a stream of credit card authorization attempts. People swiping or inserting their chip into a reader uh, or typing their number into a, a website form, whatever it is. Uh, these are all people attempting to authorize charges. That's what this, this authorization attempts stream you see on the third line there, that's what that stream is. So we want to group that, look at the second to the last line, group that by card number, and look at only those authorizations that have the same card number occurring three times. So that seems suspicious. If you get three authorization attempts on the same card, then maybe you want to look at that. So we're going to put that into a table. I'm jumping around the query a little bit, but this is kind of how you, you would narrate the thinking. So, so work with me. We've grouped by card number, and we say we only want to see if the same card number occurs three times or more, or more than three times. Um, and then we're going to put that into a new table. That first line is create table, possible fraud. So this, again, is a, is a persistent running query. It's a stream processing program that we have defined, 
It's running in the KSQL engine. It's looking at all of the events coming in on authorization attempts, grouping them up by card number, and only emitting those that occur more than three times. Now you'll notice I have missed a line in there. I have not said anything about the window. Uh, and this is key. That's that middle line where it says window tumbling size five seconds. Of course, in the whole history of a credit card, hopefully there will be more than three authorization attempts. That's not shady at all. It's just shady if they happen too quickly. So if there are three attempts within five seconds, that'd be hard for a person to do, right? To swipe or insert the card or submit the form three times within five seconds. That's a little weird. So if we see that happening within that window, then, aha, uh -huh, this is gonna be possible fraud. A very similar kind of query, but a different kind of use case. Imagine some kind of IoT network. There's a network of sensors, maybe on a pipeline, maybe there are sensors in homes, whatever they are. There's some kind of sensor and they are emitting monitoring events into our uh, central service. And they're in a topic now called monitoring stream. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a table, that first line, create table error accounts. That means we're defining a new KSQL query. It's gonna run and it's gonna be a table. What we want is from that monitoring stream, uh, we wanna group up things by error code. No. What we want is from that monitoring stream, uh, we're gonna do some filtering. That second to last line says, we only want the kind of monitoring events that are errors which is fair enough. And then we're gonna group by error code. So this table is just going to have error events and a count of how often each error event happened. And again, I leave the best part for last, the windowing, that third from the last line there says window tumbling size one minute. So this table is going to be how many times each error has occurred in the most recent one minute tumbling window. There's another video where we talk about the different kinds of windows and what the difference between tumbling and hopping and all that kind of thing is. So for now, it's a pretty intuitive concept. You can just say within a one minute window, we're counting up errors. We're filtering these events to be only errors. Uh, and this is kind of a one liner. I know as we've uh, separated the lines, it's actually six lines. But if you think about how you would do this uh, in pure Kafka consumer code, if you know that API, that would be hard. If you've ever looked at the Java Kafka streams API, for Kafka, um, this can be done there and it would be more work. There'd be more uh, boilerplate to set up. Here, it's all on one page and it fits on the page easily. You can kind of take it in within 20 or 30 seconds. It's a pretty easy query. Remember that clickstream stream we have, that very bottom line of the query there. says select star from clickstream. Uh, so we're, we're gonna do something with that clickstream data. What is that? Go to the top of the query. It says create stream views by user ID. So again, we are creating a new kind of stream. This stream processing program that's doing this work is off and running. But what we're doing now is transforming the data. I don't know how clickstream was partitioned, but if you look at the very bottom line, select star from clickstream partition by user ID, I know I want to partition this new stream by user ID. I want all of the clicks for a given user to be in order in a partition. And so I can specify declaratively that repartitioning on that select at the bottom. Some of the other details here, again, I've said I want six partitions. I want the value format, that is the, the format of the value part of uh, the messages in this new stream to be JSON. Was the old one Avro? Was it delimited? I don't know. I don't even have to care at this point. I just know I want the new one to be JSON. Also, I wanted to find the timestamp of these messages by the time contained in the column called view time. So that tells me that clickstream has a column called view time. I guess that's the time that the click occurred or something like that. Now there's another video where we dive into the whole idea of time management in uh, KSQL in a bit more detail. This is just saying in this new stream, I don't want the time to be whenever it is we happened to have consumed this click but I want it to be specifically the time indicated in that field in the data. So all that transformation, presumably these things are different in the source stream. I can create a new stream. Again, I'll call it a one-liner. Yes, technically it's five, but what's four lines between friends? Uh, it's a thing that you can look at and take in uh, and just kind of get there all at once. Being a little bit more explicit about that format transformation, imagine there's a Kafka topic called original topic Avro. Now, if you actually name your topics that way, please email me and I will get you help. But for our purposes here, it's called original topic Avro. It's a topic with Avro formatted values. And so we say in that create stream statement that the value format is Avro. 
Now the second stream that we're creating, called new topic JSON, we say the value format is going to be JSON, and we're creating it as a select from stream one. So stream one has Avro data, and that's beyond our control. It just came to us that way. We want there to be JSON data, so we select from that stream. We say on our new stream, the value format is JSON. Case SQL takes care of us. Simple as that. So that's a quick idea of a few common use cases. Some of those are almost administrative things, right? Like the value transformation and the data exploration, but getting an idea how to do fraud detection and how to do anomaly detection and real-time ETL, these are all pretty straightforward things that you can do with KSQL. I hope your imagination is kicked off a little bit with how to think about using this tool.